CQ, 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 this is Kilo 5 Charlie Lima Mike, and you are listening to the Everything Ham Radio Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Everything Ham Radio Podcast. We are up to episode number 11, and we're going to be talking about GoPacks today. A little bit later on the episode, we're going to be talking about our amateur radio spotlight, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the show notes for today can be found at everythinghamradio.com forward slash podcast forward slash 11. So what do you say we get started? Now, over the past couple episodes, we've been talking about emergencies. First off, we talked about emergency training, uh, the different types of training that you uh, need to or at least probably should take um, like the NIMS training uh, the ARRL has an emergency training um, and each each agency I guess you could say each county is going to be different on what they require so check with your local um, agencies to see what they require but you're at least going to need a, 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 the NIMS 100 and 700 uh, in order to help out during a disaster or a, a major event now the second thing we talked about was uh, being prepared, and in one of those parts of being prepared is by knowing your equipment. Now, the equipment that we have, or the equipment that is provided to us by the uh, RACES uh, organization, if they do that, um, sometimes these things are uh, basically called go packs or go boxes, or uh, emergency kits, or disaster kits, or something like that. Now, my go pack, I made by myself, and I made it probably 20 years ago, and it probably does need to be updated, and restocked, and all that good stuff. But my go pack is a relatively simple one. Um, It doesn't have the... Uh, you know, it doesn't have a mobile radio in it, it doesn't have an antenna in it, it doesn't have um, a power supply or an APRS or stuff like that. It, it's not a full, uh, I guess maybe full-blown go pack. It's more of a, a go toolbox, maybe. <laughs> but I'm going to call it a go pack for simplistic, simplistically speaking sake. I guess that's right. Maybe that's right. Um, anyways, my go pack is made up a, in a duffel bag, and when I started the go pack, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was a rather small duffel bag, no extra pockets, just a slick side duffel bag. It's evolved since then. Um, it went to a backpack after that, um, then it went to what it is now in, um, you know, a fairly good sized back uh, duffel bag with extra pockets on the side and at the end and all that good stuff. But yeah, you know, basically, really, what you need is just some sort of uh, carrying device, carrying pouch, carrying bag that will fit all the necessary uh, stuff that you need in it. So, whatever you decide, if you decide to make a go pack, that's you know. Look for a bag that'll fit everything. So maybe get all the stuff that you're going to put in it first and then get a bag so you don't have to buy another bag. Um, but anyways, inside my bag, and I've made a list and put several links uh, in the show notes of some of the stuff that I have in my go pack um, on the show notes. So check those out. Um, but in my go pack, I have, first off, I have one of those clear uh, plastic fishing lure boxes uh, that you might see at Walmart or on Amazon or something like that. I actually do have a link to this, to one of these on Amazon um, that you can go and buy. And it's basically like a 24 um, 24 chamber uh, clear plastic tote thing. It's like maybe an inch and a half thick by uh, 8 inches deep by 14 inches long or something like that and inside of that I have several different things I have things like coax ends you know the 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 uh, the SO250 
249, I think. Anyways, I have some ends on there, some BNC ends, uh, SMA ends, um, the SO249s, if that's right. I might be saying that wrong. I, my brain just kind of shut down a little bit on what that, that actual number is. So um, I have those. I have some um, like Anderson power pole connectors in there. I have some uh, I have some alligator clips. I have um, what else do I have? I have several things like each, each one of those things is filled up. Um, Anyways, that gives you kind of an idea. I also have a multimeter, uh, which comes in handy. I have a uh, SWR meter. I have a short run of RG8U coax. I have a soldering iron uh, with some solder and um, some wick and one of those little solder suction thingies. I have that. Um, I have extra batteries for my handheld. I have a charger for my handheld. Um, but I also have a a double uh, A battery pack for my handheld. And I normally carry at least uh, enough double A batteries to fill that battery pack up twice. And if memory serves me correctly, it takes like I want to say six batteries per fully loaded battery pack. So I normally have a pack of like 20 in there, but at least 12. Um, I have a little uh, Ziploc bag with um, some tools. Actually, I don't have the Ziploc bag anymore. I actually went out and, and bought um, something much like the link that I have in the show notes. Uh, of a little toolkit. Um, it has uh, screwdrivers and pliers and um, a little crescent wrench and several other little handy little tools um, that zip up in a nice little pouch. I actually upgraded not too long ago with that because I lost some of my tools um, on an event one time. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have... Oh yeah, I have I have a Ziploc bag that has a um, pocket notepad in it. You know, with those little bitty ones that are like, you know, three inches by four inches or something like that, two inches by four inches um, that you can stick in your pocket, and they have a little spiral on the top uh, for taking notes. I have uh, several pens uh, and pencils, uh, as well as an eraser. Uh, normally, when I'm when we go out on an event or something like that, I'll take that little notepad. And it's actually a waterproof notepad. Um, I'll take that and I'll stick that in my pocket as well with a couple pins. So that in case, you know, something does happen and somebody comes up to me, I can write stuff down. Um, you know, we my club does um, some parades and stuff like that uh, locally. And there's been a couple instances where a kid had run off or uh, gotten lost and they come up to me, you know, and I, you know, get their description and stuff like that. And normally within about five, six, seven, maybe ten minutes or so, we end up finding the kid. Uh, it's actually happened to us, I think, three or four times over the past uh, 15, 20 years that we've been doing this. Um, so, you know, something to write on will come in handy. Um, I also have a power cord that I made up. Um, on one end of it, it has um, some alligator clips. And by the alligator clips, I'm not talking about the little bitty dinky ones. I'm talking about the bigger ones, ones that will go around a uh, battery terminal in a vehicle. So a little bit bigger ones. Um, and then on the other end of it, I have some of the Anderson power pole connectors. And this power cord is about, I want to say it's about 15 feet long, maybe 20 feet long. And basically what I use it for is like, say, I'm doing some event and I'm going to go ride with somebody else. And um, I have a mobile radio um, that we're going to use with it. So we hook, put a magnet up on the roof. We put the radio inside the vehicle. We need some way to get power. Now, you could go through the um, through the 12-volt power plug or 
the cigarette lighter plug. You could go through there. Um, you're not going to get full power through it. I mean, if it's just a handheld, that's fine. But if it's a mobile radio, all you're going to get is your, your low power setting. Um, so I have this little power cable set up. And basically what it does, or what I do then, is I hook it up to the battery with the alligator clips, run it up along the the side of the engine compartment, um, up through the edge of the hood and through the door, and into the cab. And, you know, this 15, 20 feet long is normally long enough to go where you need it to go. Uh, it's not a permanent setup by any means, but it's a temporary one, and it gets the job done. Um, um, let's see, I also have, of course, I have a map of my, uh, my local county. It's actually a MAPSCO map. Um, with my county and a couple of the surrounding counties, um, since that's normally where I use my GoPack app, I have a map there. Um, it's a good idea to have a map. Um, do you really need one? Not necessarily, but it's probably a good thing to have. So, you know, what else could you use? Well, several things that you might be able to use or you know I'm sure you can probably think of something I mean these are just some of the examples of the stuff that I have in my tools uh, in my go pack so I'm sure you can probably think of more uh, or something else that you might need for your local area so don't be afraid to add stuff it's your go pack um, doesn't need to be exactly like mine uh, probably won't be exactly like mine um, but anyways this is just kind of maybe get you started um, now, on the other side of this issue, or this topic, are go boxes, is what I'm going to call them. And these go boxes are a lot more money uh, than this go pack will. My go pack, I probably spent maybe 100 bucks on for all the components and, and stuff like that. Now, a go box, on the other hand, is going to spend you several several hundred dollars. Um, just the box itself could cost you, you know 65 70 bucks. Then you're talking about at least one mobile radio. You know that's 200 bucks and uh, power supply and uh, you know uh, whatever you want to use it. You know I've I've included several links in the show notes to several go boxes that I found. Uh, several websites that I found with write-ups and stuff like that on them. So check those out. might give you an idea of, of Go Boxes. Um, but basically, a Go Box is basically like a mobile or an on-the-go portable ham shack. Now, I've seen some Go Packs that have just that are in a um, an ammo case or in a tackle box or something like that. And they'll have a battery in there. They will have a a mobile radio in there and uh, maybe a clock or something in there. You know, they'll have uh, coax and power connections sticking out the side of the case or something in the microphone plug or whatever. And they'll pick up that box and you know, it can be used if they're out in the middle of nowhere with no power. You know, granted, it might not be able to be used for more than, you know, a couple hours um, if you don't talk on it a lot, running off just the battery. But it works, and it gets you communications, okay? To the other extreme of this, I've seen some that have bought these... Um, uh, like sound system rack cases and you know these things are like you know maybe like three foot by three foot or or something like that and they have the racks on the side you can buy the little trays for them um, or make trays for them or you know maybe even buy a rack mountable radio for that matter um, but some of these cases that I've seen you know they'll have uh, like VHF radio, UHF radio, they'll even have an HF radio in it, uh, a built-in power supply, 
Um, I've seen some with like uh, built-in APRS systems. You know, they'll have the a TNC and a radio in there. They'll have a little rubber duck antenna that is mounted on the outside of it, um, and a GPS receiver, and it's all built into it. Um, I've seen some that have like laptops that are dedicated just to the GoPack. Um, I've even seen a couple here lately that have used uh, a Raspberry Pi and a little 7 inch uh, LCD touchscreen type uh, screen for it. And, you know, that's a pretty cheap little computer, if you ask me, uh, to add to this. Probably one of the cheapest aspects of it. Um, but anyways, then you know, then they'll take the um, the coax from the radio, and they'll put a um, a coax uh, mounted to the, or a little coax um, PL two fifty nine connector mounted on the outside of the box. Um, they'll put a, a power adapter on the outside of the box. They'll put you know several things to where they don't have to actually take the whole thing apart in order to use it. And it makes it handy. I mean, I would love to actually have one of these. I mean, even, you know, even if you made it and used it as your home station, that would be pretty cool. You know, an all-in-one ham radio box, so to speak. And then if something happens and you need to, to go to, you know, some event or whatever, you just unplug the power and unplug the coax and away you go. But... You know, there's several several uh, examples that I saw on the internet. You know, just by doing a, a quick search on Google for amateur radio go boxes or go packs, something like that. Um, and we actually had one of our listeners, uh, Richard Slusher, uh, Kilo Foxtrot 5, Romeo Hotel India. Uh, Richard actually is a fellow Texan. He actually lives about 30 miles north of me. Uh, he sent me a email after our last episode um, telling me about uh, some of the go packs that he's built and I've included some of those in the show notes um, so check those out I mean he actually has two of them built right now he has a mark one light um, which is his VHF UHF um, go pack it's built into like a like a hiking backpack, one of those camelback um, backpacks. Um, he has the antennas in it, he has coax in it, he has the radio built in it, um, a battery in it, uh, and, you know, basically he grabs the backpack, throws it on his back, and he can, you know, walk around and transmit with the way that he has it. He has a YouTube video um, that showcases it, so... Go on over to our show notes. Again, that's everythinghamradio.com forward slash podcast forward slash 11. That's the number 11. Uh, and scroll down, you know, about halfway or so, and you'll see the link there, mark one dash light. Check out his YouTube video, maybe give you a couple ideas. Um, I've actually included a couple other videos that he's made. Uh, one is a uh, off the grid power source. Um, video and another is a like a solar panel charging system uh, that he made for his Mark II, which he calls his Mark II Heavy, um, and it has HF capabilities. So check that out. Uh, check out Richard's uh, YouTube videos. Um, you know, if you like them, subscribe to his channel, give him a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Um, and um, you know, it's pretty cool. He's actually he's working on a Mark III medium he says uh, which is kind of like the big brother to the mark one and it'll have a raspberry pi computer in it so i'm actually kind of looking forward to to seeing it um maybe one day i'm gonna see if i can meet up with him somewhere and, and check it out in real life in person another one of our submissions was given to us by our good friend kale over at the Po time podcast his link that he sent us is uh, rather a collection of links. And I believe the website is uh, ar15.com, uh, maybe ar-15.com, something like that. Anyways, there's a link to it on the show notes, so head on over there and check that out. But it has like 20, 30 maybe uh, 
submissions that were submitted, I guess, to this website um, of different go packs and different go boxes that people have made. And some of them have pictures in them, some of them don't. Uh, some of the the pictures are no longer there for for whatever reason. But uh, it still has the the text on it, so it you know you might get still just an idea. Um, I found a couple other ones um, just by searching Google that looked pretty neat. Uh, one of them had a, a laptop that was mounted in it. The other one had just like uh, VHF, UHF radios, a little clock, a TNC, um, but it was made really nicely and had uh, a really clean look to it. So check those out. Uh, if you want other examples of it, like I said, just head on over to Google and uh, search for Amateur Radio Go, po- Go Boxes. Um, the images section has a ton of pictures in there. So, if you want more information about them, check that out. You know, these boxes, they come in all shapes and sizes. They could be big ones, they could be little ones, they could be ones on wheels. Um, you know, they could be toolboxes, ammo boxes, uh, several things. So, you know, you're limited only to your imagination on what you can do. Uh, one of the biggest drawbacks that I read about, that I've read about um, while doing research for this episode was uh, the power component to these things. Um, you know, if you stick a battery in these go boxes and you stick a, a, a dual band mobile in there and you stick an HF mobile in there and you stick a TNC in there and you stick a a, a laptop in there and you put um, you know some other stuff in there. Well, the more stuff you put on that battery, the less it's gonna, the less it's gonna work. The shorter amount of time you're gonna have. Um, and then even on the other hand, if you put a power supply in there and you run off of commercial power, you still have to be wary or be uh, knowledgeable, concerned. Something like that. I'm not sure the word I'm actually looking for right now. Um, of your power consumption, you know, make sure you have a big enough power supply to run all the radios and run all the equipment that you have in this go box. Um, but you know, be wary. That's the word I'm looking for. Be wary of the your power needs and your power output. Uh, so, I guess that about wraps it up. Um, whether you decide to go with a go pack or a go box or maybe somewhere in between, um, if you are planning on helping out during a major event or a disaster, um, I highly recommend you at least get something uh, like a go pack, uh, something that you can grab when you're running out the door, basically, uh, because when when seconds matter. You don't want to be running around your house like a chicken with your head cut off trying to find some random thing, you know, like a charger or an extra battery or, you know, your rubber duck or an external antenna or, um, you know, your cell phone charger or whatever. You know, when time is of the essence, that's not when you want to be looking for stuff like that. Uh, because you're bound to forget something, you're bound to need something out in the field and you not have it. So, get this uh, all set up beforehand, that way uh, you will have anything that you might need and you're less likely to forget something. Uh, So that about wraps it up for this section of the podcast. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about our Amateur Radio Club Spotlight for this week. Hey everybody, the Amateur Radio Club Spotlight for this uh, for this week is going to be the Gwinnett Amateur Radio Society in um, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Their club call sign is uh, Whiskey for Golf Romeo. You can find their website at www.gars.org forward slash W4GR. Uh, you can, they also have a Facebook group that you can join. Uh, links to all these links that I'm spitting out here can be found in the show notes 
Again, that's everythinghamradio.com forward slash podcast forward slash 11. They hold their meetings on the second Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. at Briscoe Field in there in Lawrenceville, uh, Georgia. The club has five repeaters. They have uh, two two-meter repeaters, two 440 repeaters, and even a six-meter repeater. Uh, four of the five are located right in uh, Snellville, right there next to uh, Lawrenceville. Um, they have a uh, one of their 440 machines is a uh, system fusion repeater. Their primary repeater is uh, 147.075 with an 82.5 tone. It is their uh, primary club repeater and also has echo link built into it so those of us that are not local can uh, echo link into there their uh, the call sign or the echo link uh, call sign is whiskey for golf romeo dash romeo so if you want to holler out these uh, some of these members uh, jump on echo link and uh, give them a shout they have uh, two weekly nets uh, one of them is on monday nights their monday night meeting or their monday night net uh, it is at night 30 hours. Uh, it is a swamp or a cell or uh, information net. Uh, their know it all net is on Wednesdays at uh, 20 30 hours or 8 30 p.m. Uh, and this net is basically for uh, radio updates and other information. This club I found really interesting as I was uh, reading up on it. The One of their founding members was the founder and CEO of Scientific Atlanta. Now, if you don't know what Scientific Atlanta is, Scientific Atlanta is a company that makes uh, antenna equipment originally. Um, it has since moved on and is probably the most memorable, memorable thing that they make is for making uh, TV top cable satellite boxes. Uh, their equipment was used in the first ever satellite delivered cable event in 1975 by HBO and teleprompter, the Thrilla in Manila. And for those of us that don't know what that was, which is a little uh, old for me, unfortunately, I was born in 79, so the Thrilla in Manila was the heavyweight championship bout that was fought between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. I actually had to think about this. Um, and then I remembered it after I read it. I'm like, oh yeah, duh, I remember reading that in school. Uh, anyways, um, really interesting history. Head on over to their website, check it out. They have a lot of really good information on there. Uh, they have training every meeting, um, and uh, they have their schedule up for the rest of the year, or for the entire year, and they seem to have really good uh really good training at their meetings. They have uh, lots of other things. They have a, a tech fest that they do. Their tech fest is unfortunately already passed. Um, it happened on January the 9th of this year. Um, they raffled off a uh, ICOM 7100 uh, for $5 a piece for the raffle tickets. They had several forums, a chili cook-off, uh, they had several exhibitors there. Uh, they had the Southeastern VHF Society. Um, they had the uh, North Fulton Amateur Radio League, it looks like. Um, uh, several things. Um, in door prizes, they had several. So check it out next year uh, it's probably going to be right about the same time next year uh, first part of january so check them out if you're going to be in the area next year and uh you know if you live there great if not then you know maybe it might be interesting going to um they have some training for beginners uh quite a bit of it as well so uh, if you're new to the hobby uh head on over to their website and, and check out their beginners corners right there on the menu all the way to the right. Anyways, again, the uh, club spotlight for this episode is the Gwinnett Amateur Radio Society. They're at www.gars.org forward slash W4GR. So, check them out, and uh, I guess that uh, about wraps it up for this spotlight. Hey everybody, once again I'd like to say thank you for listening to this episode of the Everything Ham Radio Podcast. If you like what you heard here, head on over to our website. There's lots of information there that I'm sure you're going to love. You can find it at everythinghamradio.com. 
While you're there, subscribe to get emails on when I publish a new post or a new podcast. You can click on the subscribe button at the top of the page or go there directly at everythinghamradio.com forward slash subscribe. Also, like me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash everythinghamradio and follow me on Twitter at K5CLM. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to this podcast, like it, share it with your friends, help me spread the word. So until next time, 73.